Hello, and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota. We're here to support you in finding a personal relationship with the God of your understanding and discovering what you already know. My name is Kathleen Frankert. I'm a licensed spiritual practitioner here at the center. I greet you today with namaste. Namaste is the Sanskrit word that means the divinity in me recognizes and honors the divinity in you. Let's begin as we do each week by affirming our vision and mission statement. I invite you to join in reading them with me. Our vision is empowering spiritual growth as a loving, inclusive worldwide community. And this is our mission. We teach signs of mind principles and other life affirming spiritual truths. We explore, we learn, we grow, we connect, honoring all paths to God. We offer in-person and online weekly services, classes, workshops, affirmative prayer support, and other spiritual tools. We create opportunities for joyful social connection, community outreach, and service. We celebrate the awakening of our innate spiritual magnificence. Now, let's take this opportunity to turn within to let go of any outside concerns, events, or activities as we prepare for our time of prayer and meditation, connect with the breath. Allow your eyes to close as our music director, Bob Teasdale, shares a beautiful song written by Daniel Namod. Get ready, my soul. Get ready, my soul As I'm diving in Get ready, my soul As I'm diving in To the deepest kind To the sweetest kind of life Get ready, get ready, my soul Everything I've ever done Everything I've ever seen Everything I've lost or won Everything I've ever dreamed Has brought me here To this present moment here To a new beginning here And I see I'm diving in Get ready My soul As I'm diving in To the deepest kind of love To the sweetest kind of life Get ready Get ready, my soul Cause here I go Get ready, my 
my soul Cause I'm diving in Get ready My soul Cause I'm diving in To the deepest kind of love To the sweetest kind Get ready, get ready, my soul. Get ready, get ready, my soul. In this stillness, I experience a deeper kind of love, a sweeter kind of life, the life that is perfect, the life that is all that is, the life that is God's life, the life that is my life now, the life that is the life of all hearing these words. It is the life that gives of itself freely, joyously, and expansively to all its creation. This is the infinite love, joy, wholeness, and peace that provides for all. I need do nothing to be deserving of these gifts, for they are all given freely, without reservation, they are always available as I am receptive to them. And so now I open to a deeper awareness of this good flowing in and through my life. I open my heart to more love. I open my spirit to more peace and harmony. I open my mind to a greater possibility and I open my arms with gratitude to receive it all. I joyously now expect, accept, and allow this good to come to me and to ripple out into the world, to family and friends, to my community, my country, and throughout the world. For I know that as I practice this act of tenderness, I am contributing to a greater peace and harmony for all. I welcome this energizing and inspiring realization. I take comfort in it and renew my faith by means of it. This is my good to claim now, and I do. Knowing this word is creative, I release it now for its perfect activity to unfold for all. I declare this to be so and so it is. Today, our minister and spiritual director, Reverend Karen Wolfson is with us to present part four of a series this month called Radical Tenderness. Reverend Karen has taken her inspiration from a new book entitled Radical Self-Tenderness, how Nurturing Your Own Soul Can Help Heal the World. The book, available on Amazon, is written by Reverend Christy Hardwick, a frequent speaker with us. In fact, Reverend Christy presented the first talk in the series. If you would like to catch up on the series, the first three talks can be found under the videos section of our Facebook page and on our CSL Sarasota YouTube channel. Before we hear from Reverend Karen, it's my pleasure to again introduce Bob Teasdale to present an inspiring song by Sting, Let Your Soul Be Your Pilot. Welcome, Bob. Let your soul Let your 
Let your soul be your pilot. When your troubles take to mounting, when the map you have leads you to doubt, when there's no information and the compass turns to nowhere that you know well, <laughs> the song says that, and I've been in that place at times, haven't you? But the song goes on to say, let your soul be your pilot. Let your soul guide you and guide you well. Mm. Here's how author Gloria Karpinski put it. Your soul knows your deepest intentions and desires, and when you relax and trust your trust, your soul's deepest intentions will open to receive and express the beautiful power of the infinite invisible. Oh, the wisdom of our soul. I have discovered that when I'm in a place of struggle, confusion, and just out of ideas, if I pause and tune into that inner something, that inner knower that we all have, I find it might be guiding me to a new action or maybe just to take a break and rest for a bit. Joel Goldsmith wrote about it this way. He said, This invisible presence goes before us to make the crooked places straight. Ah, the guidance of the soul. You know, if and when I pay attention, I find I'll, I'll have a new idea or a new perspective or some little spark of insight. As the brilliant theologian Howard Thurman said it, he said it like this, I tap the resource that is beyond me by tapping the resource that is within me. Hmm. I believe our soul is that place within us that has a direct line to the infinite. And what I'm talking about, really, is letting the infinite be our guide. And to do that, I'm talking about trust. Trusting that vast intelligence of the universe to be our guide. Now, Ernest Holmes, the architect of our teaching in his wonderful book, This Thing Called You, said it so eloquently. I am guided by the same intelligence and inspired by the same imagination which scatters the moonbeams across the waves and holds the forces of nature in its grasp. Hmm, that is powerful. Well, more in a minute, but first let's check in with each other. I'm so happy knowing you're out there. It means so much, and I always wonder, you know, how are you doing? Know that I continue to affirm for you a year of, <clears throat> of vibrant wonder. And to you, our team of financial contributors, you too are a wonder. You're an absolutely essential part of all that makes it possible for us to share our message, our caring, and our connection. Thank you. Thank you. So now, my theme this month is radical self-tenderness. And as you know by now, it is based on the new book by Reverend Christy Hardwick. Radical self-tenderness. How Nurturing Your Own Soul Can Help Heal the World. And as I've been telling you this month, when I first heard that title, it was like a soothing balm to my soul. In it, she shares her own life story of incredible pain, betrayal, and profound heartache. <clears throat> and she also shares her painstaking, arduous evolution to experiencing the healing experience of tenderness, first and most importantly for herself, and then toward others. Now, Reverend Christie gave her the first talk of this series, introducing firsthand the powerful message of her book, and that video is available for viewing on our website, our Facebook page, and our YouTube channel. And by the way, her book can be found on Amazon and also on the Centers for Spiritual Living's website shop. Now, the second Sunday, part two, we consider just what a gift it is to be tender to ourselves, to appreciate, to care for, to recognize how precious we are, each one of us. You know, it is worthy and sometimes easier to treat others in that way, but to actually be tender with myself, for you to be tender with yourself, well, that may be a whole new experience. 
Self-tenderness, as Reverend Christie described, is being tender with all the aspects of ourselves. Think about it. To tenderly hold and, and accept with an open heart the parts of you that hurt or that you feel are not okay. Now, this doesn't mean we stop growing and evolving, but it does create an inner environment of safety and care. And that is so much more conducive to our growth. Much more so than our sometimes tendency to relentlessly self-help ourselves. And our self-tenderness so gently opens us to the realization of our spiritual essence. And by the way, as I've been reminding you, self-tenderness, while so healing for each of us personally, ripples out as a healing energy to those around you and ultimately helps to heal the world. As Reverend Christie wrote, to be tender is to be vulnerable and open. Vulnerable and open people do not harm others. Now last Sunday in part three, we considered that one of the ways to practice self-tenderness is to let it be easy, to let life be easy. And I quoted from Ernest Holmes, the architect of our teaching, he said, stop trying, stop struggling. Begin to be calm, to trust in the higher laws of life, even though you don't see them, they are still there. Now, one of the principles we teach all the time is that life, the universe in all of its wisdom, supports you in a multitude of ways you can't see. The universe is always conspiring in your favor. Ernest Holmes reinforced this when he wrote, we must know definitely and consciously persistently and consistently that the universe is for us and not against us. Or, I like to say, God's got your back. So today, in our final week, we're taking a deep dive into trust, into trusting that. I know that to let go of struggle and practice the openness and vulnerability of self-tenderness can be frightening until we begin to trust that infinite support. Now I know that developing that trust can be tentative at first and, you know, tr try a little bit, try it a little at a time. Raymond Hollywell, the early New Thought author and teacher wrote a wonderful book titled Working with the Law. And it's about universal laws or unchanging principles. <clears throat> and he said, it is important to remember that back of all our toil and struggle, there are the arms of the divine supporting us. The arms of the divine supporting us. What an invitation to trust. That, that feels like um, self-tenderness to me. I mean, recall a time when someone has tenderly held you in their arms that feeling of warmth and of being safe. Yeah, that feeling. This reminds me of a story that happened during World War II. A father and his young son were in a building that was struck by a bomb. Terrified, the father tightly clutched his son's hand and they ran from that burning building as fast as they could. And ahead, the father caught a glimpse of possible shelter for them. It was a huge bomb crater, far deeper than he was tall, but he saw it and it was hopeful, and so he let go of his son's hand and jumped into the crater and then immediately turned and held up his arms to catch his son. And he shouted desperately to his son, jump, I'll catch you. And the terrified child looked into that deep, dark hole and, and he screamed to his father, I can't see you. And that father shouted back, but I can see you, I can see you. And hearing that, the boy jumped into that deep dark pit, into his father's arms, so safe. Not because of what he could see, but because of who could see him. Hmm. He trusted his father. As the scripture says, faith is the evidence of things not seen. That's trust. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, All I have seen teaches me to trust the Creator for all I cannot see. 
We can call it the um, infinite invisible. Now I know, as I observed last week in talking about practicing self-tenderness is letting life be easy, I couldn't help but acknowledge even my own pushback. You know, coming from a sense of distrust that I need to be in control, solving, fixing, figuring out, or, well, everything would just fall apart. Florence Scoville Shin, I love this woman's writing, she said, we must stop planning, plotting, and scheming and let infinite intelligence solve the problem in its own way. <laughs> this God power is subtle, silent, and irresistible. It levels mountains, it fills, fills in valleys, and knows no defeat. Giving infinite intelligence the right of way, our part is to follow our intuitive leads and prepare for our blessings. Mm. Those intuitive leads, our soul's leads. What she is saying is get out of the way. Get out of the way. But how do we do that? Well, here's just one way to do it. Relax. Yep. Relax more and try less. That happens to be the title of a little book inspired by the writings of another brilliant early New Thought teacher, Neville Goddard. And he says the portal to freeing the creativity of our imagination is not trying harder and harder, but to relax. Doesn't that make wonderful sense? <laughs> Relaxation feels so good. It's restorative, it's healthy, and you know it is a form of self-tenderness. And you and I know all too well the stress of trying harder and harder, well, it's just the opposite. So what I'm suggesting is relax and trust are synonymous. Try it this week. Relax and trust. Trust and relax. And see how you open yourself to your soul's wisdom. Letting your soul be your pilot. Start with something you think is small. Perhaps, you know, your intention for your day. Or maybe a single project before you. Or... Maybe a, a personal encounter about to happen. And by doing this, by relaxing, you are getting out of the way. As in the words of the song by Eddie Watkins Jr. that Bob is now going to sing for us and send us into our week with a wonderful inspiration. The words are so true. Listen to this. It says, running around, fixing this and that, giving it up to God, and then taking it back. Just release and let it go. You don't even have to think about it no more. Get out of the way and let God do its thing. And the song goes on to say, You look like you've got the weight of the world on your back. Just take a deep breath and cut yourself some slack. All that drama ain't good for you, so get out of the way and let God do its thing. The sun is going to shine and the river's going to flow. The tide's going to rise without your say so. The universe is working and the good is flowing. So, get out of the way and let God do its thing. And I know, I know if you do that, you are going to have a fantastically wonderful week. And so am I. And so it is. <laughs> And this and that Giving up God and then taking it back Just release and let go You don't even have to think about it no more You get out of the way Take a deep breath and cut yourself some slack All that drama ain't good for you You couldn't change what it is if you wanted to So get out of the way Yeah, get out of the way Get out of the way Let God do his thing
tide's gonna rise without your say so. The universe is working, the good is flowing. You don't plant a seed and dig it up to see if it's grown. You get out of the way. Thank you, Bob. We appreciate the musical inspiration and talents you share with us every week. And Reverend Karen, thank you for bringing us an inspiring series of messages about the gift we give ourselves and the world by caring for and nurturing our spiritual essence. At the Center for Spiritual Living Sarasota, we're here to support you in a variety of ways. And now it is time to share our offering that supports our ability to continue to be here for you. There are three ways to contribute. On your screen, you'll see our website, www.cslsarasota.com, where you can select the donate button, which allows you to contribute via PayPal or credit card. Or you may mail a check to our address shown there on our website or you can arrange automatic contributions through your own online banking. Now I invite you to take your virtual gift in your hand, place it over your heart, blessing it as you share it, and know this with me. My gift goes forth to heal, to bless, and to prosper, and the divine flow returns it to me, multiplied abundantly. And now let us declare together our offering affirmation the words are there on your screen. I give thanks that I may share of my good, my love, and my support. Thank you so much. I have just one update announcement to share today. Our spiritual living circle, which usually meets on Wednesdays, is canceled this week and will resume the following Wednesday, September 7th at 7 p.m. Eastern time via Zoom. And are you facing a challenge or seeking support for a special intention in your life? Then I invite you to visit the website and click on the green prayer request button. We have five licensed spiritual practitioners, Ron Frost, Jim Grove, Nicole Leeds, Sean Scanlon, and me, who are available to know and affirm spiritual truth with and for you. Our practitioners are also available by appointment for one hour spiritual coaching sessions. These sessions offer the opportunity to explore a deeper understanding and practical application of spiritual truth in the midst of your cha challenging issue or problem. For more information, check out their page at our website by selecting the staff tab on the left. Also on our website, you can sign up to receive our weekly email newsletter or check out our Facebook page for posts about upcoming events and fi find past services and videos on our YouTube channel. And now as we conclude our sacred time together, let us do so with the intention to live in light, love, health, and perfect peace. I invite you to listen or join in singing our closing song, let there be peace on earth. Thank you so much for being with us. Let us walk with each 
each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every breath I take, let this be my solemn vow to take. Let there be peace on earth.